time. Yes, homework time. Happy, happy homework time is here again. Lesson 10. Let's start by jotting a name down at the top of the paper. Always good to do that so you don't forget. I'll put my name in. You go ahead and put yours. And then let's write down today's date. All right, today you write the actual date where and when you are in this world. Well, let's read these here instructions, shall we? Write an equation and solve for the measurement of angle x. Verify the measurement using a protractor. Now that verify the measurement using a protractor, you're obviously on your own doing that. I'll just mention, make sure that the center of the protractor is aligned with the vertex of the angle and that the line coming off that center of the protractor, there's a line on it, that that has to be lined up with the, oops, with the arm of the angle with, you know, with one of the two rays. And generally in, in these, you're going to use the one on the right, but you could do it either way. All right, so this actually, this stuff is just like, it's just easy. I don't know what to tell you. Okay, so angle DCB, so DCB, we're given here, geometrically given, it is a right angle. So that means DCB here, and, and I'll draw this so you can see it. Oop. Boink. All right, I'll draw it so we can see it, that this here is a right angle. Okay, that's important to know that DCB is a right angle. And then we're given this angle here is 35. So what plus 35 is 90? Well, you can write out the subtraction here and do it, or you can just kind of say, all right, I can do this in my head. Uh, break it into two things, subtract 30 and then subtract 5. So from 90, taking 30 leaves 60. From 60, taking the 5 of the 35 leaves 55. And you can certainly check that. So 55 degrees plus 35 degrees equals 90 degrees. So uh, angle X is 55 degrees. Okay, great. Over here now it's telling us HGF. HGF is a right angle. And I'm going to put that in here. You don't have to do this part. I'm just doing this so we could see. Okay, hey, that's a right angle. And it actually doesn't look like it, but that's an optical illusion. Um, and this larger part here, this arc, is 62 degrees. So the question is, what is angle X here? Well, notice they've given us three blanks to deal with here. We know that the sum of these two angles will add up to the right angle, add up to 90 degrees. So those two together will be 90 degrees. We're given one of them is 62 degrees. And I could write that in either place. And so we're wondering, well, what is X here? Well, it's going to be the difference between 90 and 62, right? So let's do the opposite mental math. Uh, strategy here and add up. So 8 more from 62 will get me to 70, and 20 more will get me from 70 to 90. So an 8 and 20 are 28. And you can check that by adding 28 and 62, and sure shooting, you're going to get 90. So 28 degrees and 62 degrees, 90 degrees, therefore angle X is 28 degrees. Told you, it's just like some subtraction. I can't make it any more complicated than that. All right, let's move on. And same idea here in 3 and 4, except that we're told that JKL is a straight angle. And a straight angle, they even give it to us here, is 180 degrees. And so we're given that this part of that 180 degrees is 145, so we need to find the difference. Let's use that mental math strategy of adding up instead of subtracting. Um, so 5 more, I see, will get me to 150, and then from 150 to 180 is 30, so 5 and 30 are 35. And you can check that by adding 145 and 35, and indeed, my little friends, you will get 180. So x degrees, uh, angle, it should actually probably say angle x, not x degrees, um, but in any case. Uh, so now angle PQR is a straight angle again, so 180 degrees. We're given the uh, acute angle this time, and we have to find a very obtuse angle here, angle X, so 16. In this case, I'm going to use the mental math strategy of subtracting 
in two parts. I'll subtract 10 and then subtract 6. So from the 180, I know that's the total here. That's a straight angle, 180 degrees is the measurement of it. If I subtract 10, that's 170. And then I subtract the 6 of the 16 from 170. You know that 164? So 164 degrees and 16 degrees equals 180 degrees. Add those together. Add the 6, you get 170. Add the 10, you get 180. So the angle X severely obtuse 164 degrees. Again, I can't make this any more difficult. It's just like addition and subtraction. All right, let's go on. All right, well, new instructions. Look at that. Write an equation. So they're not giving, giving us blanks here. And you can tell with a quick glance at the pictures that we are dealing with three angles now. So we have to write an equation and solve for the unknown angle measurements. So we want to solve for the measurement of U angle USV. So U, uh, sorry, USW, USW, that's this angle X degrees. And we are given that RST, angle RST, is a straight angle. So this whole thing is 180 degrees. And so uh, let's write it in that fashion, in fact. Let's write the 180. 80 degrees, and although it looks like I'm writing within the parameters of this angle, I'm just using this space, okay, has nothing to do with that. 180 degrees, well, that's going to be composed of the two given angles, the 70 and the 35, and angle X. So we have three angles we're adding together here. So it's going to be 70 degrees plus 35 degrees plus X degrees, okay. Well, so uh, we can solve this algebraically. We can say, all right, so 180, 180 degrees. Well, what's 70 and 35? Break it into two parts to do it mentally. 70 and 30, ah, we know that. It's like a make 10 fact. It's 100, and five more is 105. So is 105 degrees plus x degrees. Now, what's the difference between them? Perhaps... You can look at this and say, ah, I know what that is. But, or maybe you can look at it and say, well, I know 100 to 180 is 80, and this will be 5 less. 5 less than 80 is 75. Or you could just write out and subtract. Um, so that means x is what? That's right, 75 degrees. And so that's what we'll write. x degrees equals 75 degrees. Well, it's redundant, but 75 degrees, we'll do it anyway. All right, so we're going to solve for the measurement, obviously, of the X angle again, O, M, L. Given that L, M, N is a straight angle, again, totaling 180 degrees is L, M, N. And we're given, again, two angles here, 72 and 73 degrees. So 72 degrees and 73 degrees, and if we add with that the x degrees, the unknown, then we'll get the 180. So 180 then is the two given angles. You can actually do this one in your head as well. Look, set, break, break it down into two parts. 70 and 70, that's easy. 140, two and three, easy again, five. 140, five, 145. Oh, I didn't write that correctly. Zero, and there we go. Sorry about that. 145 degrees and X degrees. So then X is going to be the difference between the total and the known part. Um, so you could subtract. You could write this out. The reason I'm avoiding the subtracting, by the way, is that it involves regrouping, and you're more likely to make mistakes then. So I want to show you another way of doing it. I'm going to count up, add up to... Uh, to do the subtraction. So from 145, I see five more will get me to 150. From 150 to 180, 30 more. So five and 30, 35. So X degrees is 35. 35 degrees is the measurement of angle X here, OML. Woo! Yeah, we're hot. Sizzling. Moving on. And here in number seven, the penultimate example, we have totally different instructions. In the following figure, DE 
D E F H is a rectangle. Good. So that's a given. That's actually in geometry. It's called a given. That's we're given that definition, and so that means we have opposite sides are parallel. We have four right angles. Opposite sides are equal. So without using a protractor, love to hear that. Determine the measurement of angle G E F. So you see it's marked with an arc already. Although I'm gonna I'm gonna go over it there. Like this is what we're finding. Okay, right here, this one. Darken that arc and write an equation that could be used to solve the problem. Well, so look, we know, and I'm gonna make it wicked big here. We know that this angle DEF is a right angle. That's my massive right angle symbol, which I don't want you to write down. I just needed the space. So, um, so if that's a right angle, that means this given angle of 74 plus the angle we're solving for, angle GEF, right, you add those together, you, they'll equal a right angle, which is how many degrees? 90 degrees. So that means this right angle of 90 degrees that's going to be equal to the given angle of 74 degrees plus, well, angle GEF. And I can write it exactly that way, angle GEF. Okay, uh, or you could, we could label this X again as we did in previous ones and do it that way. Okay, so that means uh, angle GEF is what? All right, that's our equation. See, right, an equation could be used to solve the problem. That's it right there. That means angle GEF. F is how many degrees? Well, let's add up. Six more will get me to 80. From 80 to 90 is another 10. So six and 10 is 16. Angle GEF equals 16 degrees. That's it. It's that easy. One more. Man, almost done. Let's do it. Well, things are a little different here now, aren't they? In number eight, we're going to complete these following directions in the space to the right. And you'll see we're going to hit a point here where what I'm doing is going to differ from what you're doing, and you're going to be oh so on your own. So I'm to draw two points to start with, uh, Q and R, and then turn that into line QR. And when I do this... Um, I'm going to make it parallel, basically, to the bottom of the page to make life easy. And I'm also going to write Q and R up above because I know I need to extend it and draw the arrows. So I want to try to leave room for that and avoid all the wicked overlap confusion I can. And so here's my line. And notice I'm going through the points and drawing. Beautiful. And I do need arrows on each end because it is a line, geometrically speaking. Line QR. Now I want to plot a point S somewhere between points Q and R. Okay, well, so uh, I'm just going to put it here. I'll put it a little closer to the Q side. You could put it anywhere. Um, and I just want to look ahead at the directions before I write the letter S, which I'm going to plot a point T and then connect it to S. So I just want to plan this out a bit. So I'm going to put T like up here, over here. So I'm going to write the S over on the left side of the point so that I have room to draw the line unobstructedly. So there's my point S. Now I need to plot a point T, which as I already said, I'm going to do out here. Okay. And now I'm to draw a line segment, TS. So just going point to point, no arrows. Oh, I did that wrong. Let's try that again. Undo. Boom. There we go. So it's a line segment. I'm surprised they didn't have us do a ray, but there we go. So it's a line segment TS. Now I'm supposed to find the measure of angles QST, which I'll indicate with a little arc here. That's QST. And then RST, RST. And note that when you draw arcs in here, if you're indicating two different angles, the arc should not line up. So I would not start it here where the previous arc is. I'm going to go out a bit, and so the arcs do not connect. So, so it's clear that these two arcs indicate two different angles. We'll find point here. Now I'm supposed to measure those, and you're going to have to do that on your paper because yours are a little different from mine. Um, but then to write an equation to show that the angles add to the measure of a straight line, 
Well, that we, we know what it's going to look like. We're, it's going to be angle QST, whatever the measure of that is, plus the measurement of angle RST should equal QSR, which we know, because we drew it with the straight edge, is 180 degrees. Okay, so whatever you get for your measurements, and it's going to differ based on where you put point T, of course, and where you put point S as well, um, the, you're going to have different numbers here. So this is as far as I can take you on this one. So you'll measure those two angles with a protractor and add them together, and they should equal 180. If they don't, that means something's off. Assuming that QSR is a straight line, that means one of your two angle measurements is off. And just go back and remeasure. And ultimately, they do have to equal 180. You, you can't end up with 178, 179, or 180, 180, 182. They must, if, if QSR is a straight line, and you've confirmed that, then those two angles must add up to 180. And one other thing you're probably going to have to do is, on a normal size protractor, the, what I drew here, the equivalent of that on your paper is not going to be long enough to extend to the point of the measurements on the protractor. So you might need to put uh, point T a little further out, or you can just extend the line for measurement purposes, okay? And you can just put your straight edge along that line and measure it. Now, if you don't have a protractor, here's my recommendation to you. If you're at home and you're like, oh my goodness, I don't have a protractor, I can't find the measure. What you would do then is you would estimate, and you would just note on your homework that angle measurements are estimated. I did not have a protractor. Like, I would look at this, and I'd say, well, that's less than, okay, so here's a 90 degree. The midpoint, 45, would be a little beyond that. So I'd say this is about a 40 degree angle, which would make this 140 degrees, because they have to add up to 180. So I would estimate those and just jot a note that you couldn't measure them because you didn't have a protractor, so they're estimated. Hopefully your teacher's good with that. But guess what? You've done it. You've gone and finished another night of homework. So I will see you again next time. It is, once again, homework time.